So there are two schools of thought about this. Let's talk about it. Illustrations by Pete. So some people get very upset. I like to go back and look at my old artwork. And if I think I want to add something or improve it, maybe put a little bit of ink in, a little bit of extra texture, extra watercolor, maybe add some marker or colored pencil over the top. I like to do that. Some people think, oh no, you can never do that. Once you put something down on the paper, that's a snapshot of where you are. And you should never change that. You should never alter that. But I think that I like to do that. So that's what I'm gonna do here. So let me know in the comments, do you like to go back and add to your artwork or do you like to just, that's it? This is a snapshot of where you were and you don't wanna change anything. I know I have to shave this off, but before I do, I wanted to show you, look, I, I think I have, I have a preceding hairline that the hair is actually coming down. It's growing this way. And when I'm 50, I'm gonna have hair to my eyebrows. Is this good content? Okay, let's get into that. Now, I know that this is just repeating what I said in the intro, but I don't know why people get very upset when they think a certain thing about art, how you should handle it. And if you do anything outside of that, they lose their mind. Or if you classify something differently than they would classify, whatever the case is, some people get very I don't know, they just lose their mind about something just so... It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what anybody does, this is their art. If they want to take this and crumple it up and chew it up and spit it into a fire, that's their prerogative. They can do that because it's their art. So, I like to go back through some of my... Now, I know, sometimes I like to go back into art and look at it and just say, okay, that's where I was and maybe just change something. And I do understand that concept, I, I get it. But I also like to go back through my art and sometimes add something to it later and say, okay, I really like this, but I'm gonna do this. In this particular piece, this is the last video that I did. I'm gonna put a link down below so you can see that if you wanna see how I created this. The thing is, when I look at it, I just, I want something different. I felt like if I add some ink to this, because it's so vibrant, and I know it's not, they're not bright colors, they're muted colors, but it's very intense. The colors themselves are almost full strength in here. So I wanted to go back and just add a little bit extra with the ink and find the little places where I could do that. Find the little shadows and the little lines in the watercolor that are already there and just add some ink to them just make them look a little different and that's what I did and I really enjoyed the process I like doing that to my art so if that's something you enjoy doing please let me know if it's not please let me know if you're hardly against this you that's it this is the end of the road for that and you're just opposed to this entirely please let me know that as well and I know a lot of people are afraid to make any kind of hard lines with art because you know, they like to just, oh, everybody's right. Everybody can do whatever they want, whatever. But sometimes I get it if you are have a hard, fast rule against something because of the way your brain processes the information and you say, look, this is just not something I'm willing to do. So that's okay too. Just, just blurt it out there. No one's going to say a word to you. If they do, I'll delete their comment. I, I Probably won't, but I'll, it'll be interesting, that's for sure. But to me, sometimes it feels like you're breathing new life into an old piece. So it had a life before, you created it, it was good while it lasted, but then it just slowly dulled over time. You go back to it, you add a couple little extra things to it, and boom, it's a new piece. It's something completely new, something completely different, and now you've just added all this extra stuff to it. So. That's just exciting to me. Sometimes I like to do that to my art and make it feel like I've just created something brand new. Even though I'm just recycling something that was older, I've just added to it. That's all. So someone sent me a comment and they were mentioning that they, I'm not going to call the person out, but they were mentioning that they wanted to try and change things up a little bit, but they feel like people expect a certain thing from them, a certain type of art from them. So they're very hesitant to create something different. And, and I get that. Sometimes you feel like you won't appease your audience 
or you might just not feel good enough to switch to something that you aren't as good at maybe maybe that's how you feel about it. I don't know maybe that's how you feel about it I know I bring this up a lot but I think it, it's a continuous struggle for artists uh, if any kind it's okay we all feel like that sometimes just don't let that stop you from creating find something that excites you about art and go for it just get into it and if it isn't what people usually see out of you then that's okay too you don't need to only create the kind of art that people expect from you and I mentioned this way too much I have probably said this exact thing several times before in several other videos but it bears repeating and most people have not seen all of my videos so they probably don't know that I said it before but so when I started back in 2015 I started doing the comic book characters and I surprised myself with how well it came out I mean it looked like trash but it was better than expected it got me excited it gave me courage to start experimenting again with art and then I went for a line and wash landscapes and the same thing happened they then I got into the animal art and narrowed it down to the bird art now I've switched it up completely and I'm doing the abstract thing and I hated abstract art before I mean I hated it I couldn't stand even to look at it thought it was pretentious and terrible but I understand it a lot more now that's a story for another day but I still create all of those things and you mostly see the abstract stuff here for me but I still create all of it. It brings me joy to create these things. On top of that, I use many different mediums to create with. And now I will admit that I will probably never master any one subject or one medium. But I don't care about that. I'm creating and uh, I'm connecting with people. I'll always try to get better, but I don't need to master anything. That's not the goal here. The goal is to connect with people and have some fun with my life and I love creating art just the idea of it I mean here's something that has never existed before and I have complete creaturely control over it and I can bend it and mold it into anything I want and enjoy the whole process and it's also a tool to connect with people and build relationships through and it encourages other people to start creating so that they can do all of those things and connect with other people it's a positive chain reaction of events and I'm just happy to be a part of one of the links in that chain so if you are concerned about how your current audience will react when you start doing something new just understand that some people that are only tied to your art may have an issue with it and they might start to pull back a little bit but people who have tried to connect with you and they've tied themselves to you will be excited to see what you're doing next no matter what it is and if you're okay with people pulling back a little bit then don't worry about it something about what you've been doing it, it all started with excitement and sometimes after you wander from it for a while, you look back and you get excited all over again for it and pick it back up. So art, art needs to have that excitement in it. If you feel stuck and trapped, then it isn't good for anyone. It definitely comes out in your work. So do whatever keeps you excited to create and keep moving forward or backward or whatever direction you need to go to find that creativity everyone has different goals so it's just my point of view that coming from someone who does not rely on art to feed myself at least not yet but I'm building an art business so this is what I need to do to keep my experimentation and curiosity up if I'm going to keep going with my art and some people will come with me and some people won't and that's just the experience that's just what you're gonna go through you're not and some people may get bored with what you're doing anyway they might say, oh, you're doing one of those again? I've seen you do a hundred of those. I'm tired of watching you do that thing. And so some people may have that react. You cannot please everybody. Just focus on what you want to do and what you want to create. And most of the relationships that you're building, they'll come right along with you. I mean, most people are just in this to have fun and get their creativity out and explore different things just they have to create anyway so they pour themselves into this thing called art 
And it just, it fulfills a need that they have. And one more thing I want to mention before I'm out of here, always look on the bright side. So if you suck at art at what you're doing and you're just starting out doing that new thing, you have one advantage over any good artist. It's a huge advantage in my opinion. And I'm not encouraging this, but you could use anyone's reference photo for your art without permission because you suck so bad that it won't even look close to the original photo. So you're in the clear. Just as a side note, I guess, but don't do that. But you could do that is what I'm saying. I might have done that at some point. I, I still, I definitely still don't do that. But I do still suck at some stuff, so at least I have that going for me. All right. So go ahead and thumb up the video if McDonald's as a kid confused you because you understood that Ronald McDonald, McDonald has the name McDonald. You understand that. The Fry Guys, you understand what fries are. The Hamburglar, you understood it was a hamburger burglar who stole burgers. But you were very confused because you didn't understand what a giant purple thing had anything to do with hamburgers. And they called it a grimace. That confused me. I wasn't sure what was going on there. Every other character, I, I get. But what the hell was that? If you know, post that in the comments below. I want to know what the hell was that. Alright, I'm going to go. And I'll see you in the next one.